Hello everybody, welcome back to part six of the Boulder Corner. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted a video. Um, quite a lot's been going on in that time. Um, I've not felt so good. I've had a few problems with my back pain and managing that. So um, I wasn't able to get a video out last week. So um, there's a little bit of catching up to do. So I'll go around the, the room and show you um, what's happening with the different pairs um, that I've got in the, in the room. Um, quite pleased so far, some ups and downs, but we're gonna get that. Um, I've done a bit of a DIY um, job on, on making a, an egg food rack. Is that right? An egg drawer rack. Um, so I'll show you how I did that. Um, you'll see over my left shoulder here, um, I've got a new bank of cages in since last time. Um, this is a bank of six, uh, Malcolm made for me, um, slightly bigger than the ones that, um, that I already had in. Um, so these are gonna be a, a massive uh, improvement for me so looking forward to getting those set up and um, starting to get some birds in those. Um, I've got plenty of space now for any youngsters that I might breed so as well as having the um, batch of cages uh, the new batch of cages on the left um, I started to do some work with Elliot on this back of cages behind me and I'll talk about that in a little while as well so um, I'll start off with, with having a look at the um, the border pairs and the border trios, etc. I've gone into quite a lot of detail again um, with what I'm doing and what stage they're at. Um, please let me know if it's boring. I don't want people um, to turn off because the content is boring. So um, if you're enjoying what I've what I've put up, it's, more, it's kind of a bit of a blog as much as anything. Um, so if you're enjoying the content, that's great. If you think I go into too much detail, I don't mind being I uh, criticise for that. I'm quite open to constructive criticism, so I'll, I'll change it around if, if you all think I need to. Um, so, yeah, um, but let's start off with having a look at um, my borders and where we are this week. So it's been uh, a fortnight since um, I last did a video with uh, to give you an update. Um, I thought I'd start off by going around the room quickly, letting you know where we are. Um, Straight away, I want to talk about this um, trio that I've got in this this top cage. Um, there's been a bit strange, um, and I think I might have made a mistake with the way that I've managed these. Um, I think I've somehow created a pair bond between my blue hen and this variegated cockbird. Um, I set them up as a trio, so um, they're all in separate cages. And um, I was um, waiting until I saw some evidence of the um, of the hens going to nest um, before I, before I decided to to bring the birds together. And I saw saw the evidence of that with the blue hen first. She started picking up little bits and pieces, and there was a little bit um, from the the green hen as well, but um, the three parts dark hen as well, but not a huge amount. Um, but eventually they both did start picking up. So I thought it would be a good time and they started to look at building a bit of a nest. So I decided that I would um, have a look at, um, at letting the cockbird in. So I did this with this uh, with the blue hen first. And as soon as the slider was pulled and he went in, he, he mated us straight away, probably immediately. Um, so this was obviously um, positive news. Um, I, I left it probably half a day. Um, and then I let him in with the um, with the three parts dark hen here, and he attacked her, and it was quite a vicious attack. Um, he had a pin to the to the cage fl uh, floor, um, and was pulling um, feathers out. So I quickly stepped in and separated them, and I just assumed that he didn't like her or she wasn't ready or something. But um, later that day, I let him have access to the blue hen again. He shot her again. Um, and then I did the same thing on the following day. And uh, so she, he trod her four times in 48 hours. Um, I put him back with the three parts dark hen here and he attacked her again. Um, and it was quite nasty that um, this happened for three days on the trot. On the third day, I thought he was actually going to kill her. He had a pin to the cage floor. I was at the other end of the bird room just cleaning the cage out and I saw it drop my tools quickly and hobbled over to, to step in and he was, I thought he killed her. She was stationary on the, on the bottom of the cage with her legs up in the air. 
So I split him out again and put him back in his own cage and left her alone. It took probably two minutes before she righted herself and was back up on the perch. Um, so obviously this was something I was, I was quite concerned about. Um, but all the time, we were having good news with him threading the blue hen. So things progressed well there and I got to the stage now where um, I've actually managed to pair up Sorry, I, the reason I'm just I'm just caught a little bit. I've got a a white variegated bird, a white variegated bird, and a clear black hen down here. And with all the singing that's going on in the cage, he was just asking to be mated, but the bird that I've got with is just stood watching not sure what to do. Anyway, I'll come back to them in a minute. Um, so um, I think I've somehow inadvertently somehow I've created a pair bond between. The, this yellow cock and the blue hen. Um, she's actually laid two eggs now. Um, that was interspersed with her laying one one day. The second day, when I would have expected the second egg, she looked very unwell, was very puffed up all day, sitting huddled on the on the bottom of the cage and so on. And I thought I was I thought I was in trouble, and I thought I was gonna um, I was gonna lose her. Um, and towards the end of the day, she actually produced a yolky coloured blob so I don't know whether the egg broke inside her or whether um, she had she's not produced a shell and um, they get calcium born three times a week now um, and they've got um, access to cuttlefish and they've got access to uh, moisture shell grit so I was kind of thinking it shouldn't be um, an issue with um, lack of calcium but anyway um, I'd, the following night, I hadn't actually put the slide in place properly because I looked at my webcam in the morning and I saw that the cockbird and the hen were sat on the side of the nest pan um, and they were actually um, pecking at something, which I hurried out into the, I say hurried for me, um, I came out into the bird room to have a look what was going on and um, in the bottom of the nest pan appeared, um, there appeared to be a, um, a damp mess which I just think was what was left of, a, of an, egg, uh, an egg that they'd both eaten. But there was no sign of any shell. So I'm wondering whether she just produced the same thing as she had on the day before. Um, I've come out this morning and she's laid... Oh, so I put the slider in last night and separated them again. And I've come out this morning and I have found that she's laid a, um, a second egg, which would have been her fourth, effectively. So I've decided to set them. It's only two eggs. Um, because I've seen him tread her on a number of occasions, I'm hoping that um, that they're going to be full. Whether she lays a fifth egg or not, I don't know. We'll just have to see. Um, but with any luck, we'll um, we might get a couple of youngsters out of these two. So that's the update on that pair. Well, that trio, I should say. So those of you who have been watching my channel the last few weeks will remember I put up a, a link at the end. Those of you that have been watching my channel for a few weeks now um, will have seen the um, video that I put up about the um, loss of the uh, white and blue variegated cockbird that I had. Um, something I was really disappointed and upset with. I'm really keen to build an allied line. Um, I really like the whites and the blues, as I've mentioned on a number of occasions before. Um, so losing that white cockbird was, you know, pretty miserable, to be honest. Um, and one of the extraordinary things about this hobby that I'm learning and seeing is the generosity and friendship that comes from others. And my good friend Malcolm, who is predominantly a Fife uh, breeder um, and doing really well with his Fifes, he had a couple of few boarders. Um, and when I told him that I'd lost my white cockbird, um, without any hesitation at all, Malcolm said, well, you can have mine. Um, this was a, a white cockbird, one of last year's birds um, that he purchased in December and I brought him into my little stud and I've paired him with this yellow, uh, clear yellow hen 
you know, she's obviously, I say obviously, she's what she's a, a 2022 bird as well. So ideally, you'd be looking at pairing, as far as I know, flighted to unflighted. And in this case, I'm pairing two unflighted. So I'm hoping that it doesn't give me a problem. But she's already built a nest. She's done a really good job of building a nest, starting out with uh, ripped newspaper, which I showed um, one of the other birds having done um, as well. And then um, she's finished it off with jute. As you cut jute string and um, some kapok, she really likes the kapok. So this is these two have been put together as a pair. I pulled, I had a wire divider on for a few days, and I've seen him feeding her through the wire. So I figured I might as well pull the wire and see what happens. And there's been a little bit of squabbling every now and then, but generally speaking, uh, the two of them have got together quite well. So. Um, He's a nice type, but slightly smaller than her, um, I'd say, possibly. Uh, but I think he's a, he's a smashing little bird. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that between the two of them, we get some allied either a, a, a clear white would be brilliant, but any allied, to be honest, would be, um, would be magic. Next up is um, the birds that I'm pairing keep saying pairing, the, the birds that I'm hoping I'll be able to get successful breeding out of my best cock bird. So this is the fella. Um, he's, um, he's my best cock bird. He, he's, he's quite quite fit now. Um, lots of singing, lots of jumping around the uh, cage um, when he's um, in his own stock cage. Um, so, so far um, he has tread um, this hen, which is actually his daughter. He has um, trodden her um, multiple times. Um, pardon me. It, it progressed from, as soon as he goes in, um, there's a bit of a standoff for a minute or two. And then she'd hide in the corner. He'd get down to her. Then she'd squat and flip the wings and he'd tread her. Um, it progressed from that, went from that to um, him going in and her squatting straight away and then um, ended up with them fighting. Um, so as soon as they started fighting, I don't know whether I'm reading the signals here or not, but it's a bit like as soon as they start fighting, I'm wondering whether that's effectively it and we're not going to get any more um, any more treading. So that's kind of the, the yardstick that I've taken. So, um, And I'm pleased to say that she's laid two eggs. Um, so they're in the um, in my egg food, in my egg box. Um, we'll keep our fingers crossed. It's early days again. Um, still, obviously, it's just the... Um, starting the third week of March now. So um, if we get anything from the first round, it would be great. We'll, um, we'll just plod along anyway and see how we go. Next up is, oh, let's get a better shot than that. Next up is this beautiful little buff hen. Um, same thing happened here, really. Um, he trod her immediately. As soon as the cage was opened, he was straight in and trod her immediately. Um, so I was quite excited that I'd got out of the three birds that I wanted to mate him with. Um, I'd seen successful treads with two out of the three. Um, so this was good news. Um, she, same thing happened. I put him in with her, in with her two or three times a day. He trod her probably twice a day out of those two or three times. That went on for about three days or four days. And then yesterday, um, sorry, it's Thursday today, uh, Tuesday, when he went in, they were quite aggressive um, towards each other. Lots of flying around, chasing, trying to get out of each other's way, well, him trying to get out of her way at some points. So I followed that as the same signal and I've uh, decided not to put him back with her now. And then this morning, um, I've come in and she's laid her first egg. So um, that is a beautiful little uh, clear buff hen that is sitting on a plastic egg, number one. Um, hopefully we'll have a few more to follow from them. And then back to the cock birds. I've, at the moment, you can see I've got him in a uh, show cage hanging on the front of the um, third hen's cage. Now the reason for this is every time he's gone in with her, she's just walked away, shows no interest at all. 
Um, she's built a nest. She spends time in the nest. Um, I put a little bit of soft capoc in, which she takes and she puts in a lion's nest. But other than that, she just sits on the floor. And he is displaying to her big time, standing right up on his toes, singing vociferously, really, really strong singing. She's just ignoring him. So um, he gets to the stage where after he's been in for a few minutes, they start having a bit of a scrap. Um, now, I'm just assuming that she's not ready yet. I think that's probably what it is, um, that she's not ready yet. So rather than keep putting him in, uh, upsetting, distressing her, um, I decided that I'll hang him on the front in this show cage um, and see what happens. Um, it's interesting to see that she's actually, sorry, it's not brilliant videography on my part, but you can see that she is sitting at the, on the floor by the cage um, where he is, and she's pretty much ignoring him, but she's not frightened and rushing away. So um, we'll keep our fingers crossed with, with something from her in the future. But So that is my um, yellow cockbird, my best yellow cockbird, and the three hens that I've got him paired with. I know that I've got my birds down in March. Um, it's March the 22nd today. Um, and I know that there are a lot of breeders that won't have started yet. Some still have their birds in their flight cages and so on. Um, I've gone a bit early than I would normally have expected to um, because I have a wedding to go to um, in a few months time and it's gonna clash with part of the breeding season. So I've tried to go a little bit earlier. But in doing so, um, I was very conscious last year that I felt I tried to bring the birds on too quickly and put the cocks in with the hens too early and so on and so forth. So I'm really waiting and waiting and, and wait, you know, until I'm confident that I'm seeing the right signs. Um, and that's when I'm, I'm bringing the pairs together. And that clearly didn't work with these two. It appears not to have worked with these two. And, and it looks like the first round are all going to be clear. Um, but it's still very early, it's the 20th, 22nd of March, as I say, so I've got plenty of time yet, but I'm hoping to be able to take advantage of the fact that I've started early and that I can get the, um, the birds um, finished breeding um, by the beginning of June, so that when I'm away for the wedding, uh, I'll be away for, for nearly a week, um, I can reduce the workload that my son's going to have. Um, now, something else I wanted to just put on video as, a, as an extra, um, I've, as I've got more birds and I'm anticipating more youngsters, I've bought a lot more of the round feeder drawers, um, the egg food drawers, um, and they were getting everywhere. I didn't have enough storage for them. They were in a plastic bucket, uh, one of those tower units. Um, and it was a real pain, things forever getting in each other's way. So um, I decided to make um, an egg rack, um, egg food drawer rack, I should say. So. I put a few photographs together of what I did. I'll talk you through that next. Um, and at the end of that, there is a cutting list with sizes on, etc. So if anybody else wanted to have a go, um, it's really straightforward. I'm disabled and I managed to do it. My wife did the sawing for me. Um, I did All I did was a little bit of gluing and a little bit of painting. So um, it's a pretty straightforward thing to do. I used scrap wood um, and it's hardly cost me a thing. So. Um, anyway, here we go. Have a look at this and tell me what you think.
Um, here's something a little bit different now. Um, I thought I would have a go at putting an egg drawer rack together. Um, I've got a little bit tired of all my round egg food drawers filling up my feeder box where I've got my drinkers and my uh, other finger drawers and so on and so forth. So I got a little bit tired of the mess that it was making and I thought I'd have a go at making some, something that I could store everything in. So um, I'd seen on Facebook that somebody had a go at this um, and had it on his wall. Um, and I thought, right, if um, it looks quite straightforward, it's just a few rectangular pieces of wood glued and screwed and nailed together. So um, I've got quite a lot of wood knocking about from when we did the cages last year and from um, assembling the, the shed and so on. So um, I thought I'd, I'd just see if I could have a look at that um, and put some together. So um, here you can see the raw materials. What I've got here, the, the piece of white plywood on, on the far right, um, is actually um, a old tray from an old um, cage that I broke down. Um, and then the two pieces at the top were um, part of a cage that I bought as a double breeder. I bought two double breeders and joined it together. And these two pieces were um, the two ends of those. So um, I used that. Um, and there's a few rails that I, put, I just snagged from, from my pile of old wood. Um, as you can see, it's all rough and ready. None of it's in, in um, is pristine. So I've had to start from the beginning with all of it. Um, and I used um, the five mil piece of wood here on the right hand side. I used that for the back. Um, and I measured the, I laid a, um, an egg food drawer down on the rack. So down on the back in three different places. And that's what gave me um, the widths that I was, I was going to use. Um, and then this piece of um, wood on the right, um, I've marked out there um, the different rails that I'll need. So here you can see I've marked on the back um, where the different rails uh, are going to go. There's some little pilot holes there drilled through. Um, and um, the first rack um, side uh, rail is being assembled. Um, I've got to thank Jane here because Jane did most of the sawing of all this for me. All I had to do was measure it and, and assemble it. So, um, so that's the first one of those on. Um, the next photo here, you can see I've got the first one glued and set and the other three rails ready to go. Um, once I'd put the rails on, um, the next part was to fix the top and the bottom. Now, this front piece that you, you can see at the top of the egg food, drawer, uh, egg food rack here, um, at first I thought it'd probably just be aesthetics that it would go on and it would um, basically just make it look nice and finish it off. But in real terms, it's actually added quite a lot of strength to it, to the, um, the whole thing. Um, and you can see I've got a top on there as well that I've fitted. Um, and I've then cut two um, front pieces of an equal width um, to go on the middle two rails and then two more front pieces that are slightly narrower which sit on the outside of the rails. Um, because I was using um, scraps of wood I had lots of dips and ruts and gaps and gouges and it was just a mess. So these were all rubbed down with sandpaper. Um, and then because there were still quite a few, um, out came the polyfiller um, and a fairly um, generous amount of polyfiller was, was applied. Um, once that was all dried off, um, I, um, I rubbed it all down again. Um, one thing to note here is if you have a go at making one of these, um, paint the inside before you put the front pieces on because the front covers made it so difficult to get the paintbrush inside. I managed to do it but it was just a pain so if you do have a go um, paint the inside before you before you put the front covers on. Um, and here you can see the finished wrap, the finished item. Um, you can see what I mean about how tricky it is to get in there and paint. That was a nightmare so um, those front covers are just pinned on um, and here we have the finished item after three coats of undercoat, a top coat of gloss, um, and here it is installed in the bird room. So if you're thinking about, if you've got a similar problem and your round egg food drawers have been a pain, why not have a go at making one of these? Um, as I said at the start, all this is made out of scraps of wood, most of which came from building the cages. So um, if you wanted to, you could go and get one sheet of nine mil plywood 
Um, I think 9mm is probably the smallest you'd want to go with um, and then you can knot one of these together quite straightforward. Um, this last picture on here is the cutting list that I used. Um, these are all the measurements of the wood that I had but as I said just now you could do the whole lot of 9mm out of 9mm plywood to make it cheap uh, and easy to do. Uh, so just a little project that I thought I'd have a go at, I thought you'd like to see. Um, if you do have a go at making one, let me know. It'd be good to see how you get on. Okay, well, that's it for this week. Um, I've been going for just over 22, 23 minutes, I think it is. So um, it's probably enough of me wittering on. You'll, you'll be bored with me. So um, I'll finish off now. Um, thanks ever so much for everybody who's been subscribing. We're over just over 310 uh, subscribers now. If you think about subscribing, give it a go. It doesn't cost you anything. And if I could get to 500 uh, subscribers by the end of the next month, I'll be absolutely blown away. We've got the number that we've got, 300 and so, and we haven't been going a month yet. So um, I wish everybody good good luck with all your birds. Um, I'm sure that everybody uh, is starting off now, in a, certainly up here in the UK. I don't know about some of your other subscribers around the world. Um, I wish you all the best if you are. Um, just getting going and uh, fingers crossed that you will have a successful breeding season um, and I will see you in the next episode part seven